everybody ready for the for the next thing in the the program it's uh, going to dive into how the big uh, TV channels, the big streamers are working to becoming more sustainable, uh, more green. You probably all know this situation. Uh, you sit down by the sofa, you uh, turn on your TV, and then you turn on the streaming service. And in the rest of uh, your work home, there, there's your wife somewhere else and your three kids somewhere else. That's ex exactly the way they, it works at our place, exactly that. Everybody's watching their, watching their own thing. But maybe then the kind of the bad, uh, you kind of start feeling bad because you, you you kind of know you're using a lot of energy and uh, but uh, we got uh, we have uh, Carsten Topold who is the chief financial officer of uh, TVT, uh, Morgan Williams who is the head of production at uh, BBC, and uh, Robert Smith from New Day and uh, actually Robert Smith and uh, yeah. Pedersen. <laughs> I mean, uh, I will start out with a question for actually the same question for all three of you. How does this journey? Jesus. <laughs> Sorry? Don't ruin the equipment. <laughs> <laughs> How does this journey working towards become more sustainable started from each three of you? Uh, could you start, Carsten? Yeah, thank you. And thank you for, for setting this up. I think for us at, at 2v2 Denmark, it was basically a very simple, intuitive question yeah. that we're trying to answer is. Mm. When we, if every Dane is spending, I think, three plus hours every day watching TV or streaming, are you climate uh, neutral when you're doing that? Or are you actually, uh, uh, or do you have a, a negative uh, climate impact? And that is the, the, the intuitive, simple question that we are trying to answer. Then we said at TV2 Denmark, we have a, a 25 strategy on where we want to be with our customers, on our content, on our value proposition we should also have like a climate ambition as part of that strategy. So the plan we have set out is that we say when the rest of uh, Denmark wants to reduce their uh, carbon uh, footprint by 70% in 2030, TV2 wants to be a part of that journey. So that is just, yeah, the simple version of it. Mm. Moment? Yeah. What is that? I mean, it's it's a really important th thing for the BBC, uh, and part of the journey is we, we, we don't want to do carbon offsetting. Mm. Actually, we want to be uh, uh, zero, uh, and it's more important, I think, that we we don't offset what we do, but we get to a position where we don't where we don't do a lot of things, uh, and we're working, uh, you know. So in the productions that we make, we're trying to make those more sustainable. We're trying to um, do things in our productions that see if there's a behaviour change from the programmes you watch. So if we do our um, Wild Isles programme or Green Planet, Blue Planet, uh, then is there something in that? And we're trying to see if there's a behaviour change from the programming that we're doing. And we're working with a lot of our partners and suppliers to try at least 450 of them to try and make sure that, that what we put out to them, they are also giving to us uh, and we're not going. So behind the productions that you see and whether you're streaming it or, or, or how you're, you're uh, you know, you're, you're engaging with our content, um, uh, we're, we're trying to make that content a lot more sustainable. Robert, same question. Yeah, it's actually a question with uh, various and different answers, mm -hmm. but, but the short one would be that we are a huge company. Mm -hmm. We used to be the TDC Group, now we're called New Day. Uh, so it's, it's everything that used to be TDC Group without the network. We have more than 4 million customer relations in, uh, in Denmark. So it's, it's coming from an idea of the need to be responsible. Uh, so we have uh, our owners pushing us to be very ambitious on climate, on environment, on our social uh, 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 programs we have in the organization. So, so already three years ago, we set targets for climate uh, net zero. So for in, in, two so for in 2028, we're going, to be, we're going to be net zero in scope one and two, and already in 2030. Uh, 2030, we're going to be in it so in in our entire business, including uh, scope three. So that's quite ambitious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, what you said at the end is that because all of what all of you are saying is uh, sounding great, and uh, we all wanted that to be the the reality in the future. But also, kind of by default, you're also all three of you companies that use a lot of 
energy who uh, actually by default doing a lot of things that's not that's substa sustainable. But a lot of it also starting out with setting ambitions for wh what you do with that's actually why I'm saying okay. So could go into a little bit more that to how to actually make concrete ambitions you can actually change from. Yeah, we're talking about climate, which mm. is very much uh, in the time these days, um, we have followed the Paris Agreement. Mm. So saying that we were a country, we would do our best to, to you know, keep the, the temperature uh, uh, rise below the 1.5 degrees. So, uh, so we calculated that we had to, in order to do that, we had to be in, uh, heading for net zero in, in 28 already in our direct and indirect emissions, mm -hmm. which is not that hard actually. It's, it's simply just to look at how do, you, how do you consume energy and do that better. So we made some uh, power purchase agreements. Mm -hmm. So uh, in 26 and maybe already next year, 100% of our electricity consumption will be provided mm -hmm. from newly established mm. solar parks. Mm. Uh, so we're not just buying an offset, we're actually creating solar parks ourselves. And when we did it, mm. and we had a fixed price, it was when the energy price were really low. So that was an extremely good business mm. uh, for us. Uh, and then the rest is, you know, fuel for cars. Mm. And, and we have this Green Fleet project mm. where every time we are renewing a lease contract, we are doing everything we can to have an electric vehicle. And all the places where we have oil or gas heated houses, we are installing electric heating pumps. So it's possible, it's, it's, it's not that difficult. The difficult part is, and now I'm taking all the time, sorry. No, it's fine. The difficult part is our supply chain. Mm. And uh, we are providing, I mean, we, we have around 70% of the mobile phone market in Denmark, mm. which makes it really um, imperative for us to work with our suppliers. Mm. But even though we are a big company in Denmark, when I'm approaching Apple or Samsung or Huawei or Sony or whatever, they, they, they're not even picking up the phone. Mm. They're not responding to my emails. So we, we joined uh, 29 other uh, international mm. huge corporations in the telco business. Mm. Uh, so with them, we have around 60% of the Apple's uh, total revenue. And now we can go to Apple, yeah. say, we want you to reduce your emissions or whatever. Um, but then again, I think on, if, if you take my list of suppliers, I think Carsten is on, yeah. on number three or four. Yeah. Uh, so, and I don't think it w I would gain much from calling Carsten and saying, well, can, can you provide me with a net zero product? Yeah. So, Perfect yes. delivery. Yeah. <laughs> so how will you do that, Carsten? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think to, to your question was, how, how do you set the ambition? I think at, at TV2, it was when we're doing a, a, a traditional strategy with uh, viewing targets, with financial targets, ESG or climate is an integral part of it. Mm. So it is basically one of our, our key things that we do. So we set these targets on climate, we also have social targets, we also have, have governance targets. So ESG has become an integral part of what we do in the boardroom and also what we do at, in, in among the, uh, the board of directors. Mm. So that is one thing that has changed a lot. Then your second question is, why do we do it? I think we do it for different reasons. We, we do it, of course, because, as you said, Robert, with the Paris Agreement, mm -hmm. you have legislation coming from, from, from the top. So at, in, in 2030, Denmark has to, be, uh, has to reduce their, their carbon footprint by 70%. And of course, we want to be part of that solution. The other pressure, and that I think that will come, is from, our, from ordinary Danes, mm -hmm. because they want to, to have an answer to my first question is, when we are watching TV2 or watching streaming, are we climate neutral or are we not? So we, we need to give it to give that answer. And then in the short term, I remember the first time we met Robert, that was <laughs> uh, our first meeting was uh, your question to me was, how is it with your climate, uh, climate f footprint, Carsten? Because we were actually, I think you were actually our, f our, f our uh, biggest uh, client, right? And in, in two years, you will want real documentation from us. So that is the, the short-term pressure that, that, we've, that we have to, to live up to as a, as a media company. Mm -hmm. And you, you mentioned documentation. Could, could documentation? Could, yeah, could you go a little bit more into that? Yeah, but I think let's may, maybe just yeah. have a moment on, on because yeah. then we'll take a, a third session yeah. on documentation mm -hmm. because that is going to be a bit of a challenge yeah. uh, on, on how we solve that yeah. on the documentation. And, and and building on, uh, but not repeating what mm. these guys mm. have said, um, we've got actual science-based targets uh, and, you know, we find we feel that that's really important uh, as, as a way forward for the BBC. We've got pledges. Mm. Uh, we're about to, to launch um, next month at the EBU News Exchange 
exchange our, our journalism uh, climate pledge, uh, and we'll have you know, some interesting things to say there. But, but I think the science-based targets are the things that keep us true. You know, the, the, there is no argument with that. And that's what the BBC, about this, this net zero, has, has moved towards. Uh, and you know, that we've got sort of three pillars of, of, of our strategy. Uh, and that's one of them. The other, you know, working with suppliers, as I've said. So we're really clear on how we think we're going to try a, mm. and deliver this. And in my own uh, sphere in news, I, I operate, as you said, I run news operations. It, it's about, we actually retrofitted one of our satellite trucks mm. with, with, a, with a green generator. So it's not a diesel generator. And, and of course, in the production we're doing in, in the World Cup, for instance, in Doha, teams there, and not just the BBC, I've talk, spoken to a lot of broadcasters, remote production mm. is, is really helping us, is our friend here. Mm. It's really helping us bring down those numbers mm. for sustainability. The irony of me flying here to deliver you a, a talk on sustainability is not lost, by the way, but <laughs> I was here anyway. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, that really cuts teams mm. in half. So little by little, that all makes a difference. Mm. Um, so uh, that, that will contribute towards our targets. And then moving on to challenges, uh, could you pick up on, the, on the, that card, you, uh, documentation, one of them, but, but the main challenges right now? Yeah, because what is, what is happening right now is that for companies uh, of our size, mm. uh, and especially I know that the BBC are now, now borderline EU, but, but you probably uh, have to live up to the same regulation, is that from 2025, uh, the re regulatory uh, requirements to us will be quite heavy. And um, it's, it's, uh, it's a very ingenious uh, thought uh, made by uh, uh, European uh, bureaucrats in Brussels is that you basically have to uh, prepare the same kind of uh, statements that you do on your finances. Mm -hmm. You have to have similar statements on your uh, climate mm -hmm. footprint and also on your uh, social impact, basically. So this is going to be a, a, a really big transformation, say, for my role mm. as a CFO, because I don't only have to, to report on the financial numbers, I also have to mm. report on the ESG numbers. Mm. And the whole, uh, the whole uh, purpose of this is that everyone, it should be visible to everyone whether a company is on the right track mm. on becoming more climate neutral or not. Do they have mm. a solution or not? Are they moving in the right direction? So that is, say, the positive story about this. Mm. The negative story about this is that the, 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 the volume of numbers and the volume of data points that we as a company need to collect, mm. and we need to do that in, in, in tandem, in, in, in symphony, mm. because my, my scope three is, is what was scope one and two and so forth. Mm. We need to do this collectively. And t to be honest, I don't think there's a really good answer to how do we actually do this. Mm. In a in a in a in a in a in an agile way, but uh, but that's also why we're here. That's why we we're starting having these discussions. But you also actually you mentioned in there that maybe you get a, a challenge model that you said you both need to do documentation on the financial side, but you also need to do documentation on the footprint. Side. But sometimes that actually maybe is interest that doesn't match that well. How do you balance that internally and go? like financial interest over footprint. It's gonna, fr from, from our point of view, it's going to be difficult because if we say, if you look at what you call downstream on mm. our customers, that is actually Robert. He's actually one of our mm. central customers. Mm. So in two years, I'm going to ask Robert, how does your climate, um, how, how does your climate accounting look like, right? Mm. And he's going to ask me simultaneously. So we're going to hopefully exchange <laughs> valid uh, data on that. If I look on our, what you call our supply chain or upstream, mm. Mm. Our challenge is that we, we live from and we are dependent on, say, a, a really large, creative Danish uh, production environment. You have small, uh, established, uh, or you have big, established companies, mm. but you also have these very small, creative businesses. Mm. And in two, three years, we're going to have to ask for, for, for their uh, documentation about how their ESG uh, going along. Mm. And one of my uh, things that I have said I would like to do is that I would try to, to help them find out how could they report mm. in, an, in an agile way so that we can still have a, a cooperation going forward. Yeah, and I, and actually, I have worked in production companies, and the administration isn't their uh, strong side. Administration, <laughs> they are good at many things. Mm, good at many things, not that. Not <laughs> <laughs> it's not, not that, a good that, thing. That. But we are very dependent on having this viable mm. uh, production uh, environment, and mm. of course, we want to help them see how can they actually be 
become part of this. Well, but economy. you're right, that there's, a, there's a struggle there. Mm. Yeah. There's a struggle between uh, what we'd really like to do mm. and the financial mm. element of it. Mm. Uh, and, and if it was easy, mm. we'd have done it by now. Yes. Uh, and it's so my truck fleet, my van fleet will all need replacing. We, we had a, a, an ambition to be, you know, zero by 2030. I said, I can do better than that. I'll be 70% by 2023. It's worryingly 2023 now, and we haven't found the right electric mm. van for my camera news fleet mm. for fast reaction, getting to news stories yeah. that will get them there in one go. Mm. That virtually, you know, you've got to be able to do 200 miles to, to get to a news mm. story. It's not much of a news story if you sit on the motorway for half an hour <laughs> and you're not first there. And how do you weigh that up against the ambition? So we're sort of waiting for the right vehicle. Mm. Mm. Um, uh, when's that going to come? Mm. Uh, and we're going to have to jump at, at some point. But we're looking at all, all new ways. Can I, can I just show my film in a, in a yeah, second? Yeah, you can show your film. Let me, let me j listen. Mm -hmm. I, I absolutely appreciate I'm here in Denmark where you guys use cargo bikes all the time. Mm -hmm. It's a bit new for us in the yeah. UK. Uh, but we, we've actually set up a, what's called a bike bureau uh, in the Netherlands and it was the brainchild of the two people in the, in the film. Uh, and they've, they've created a whole bike team, and we're, we're again, going to be launching that next month. But a, we, we've, we've put it out there. Just, just have a look. Are we in the way, or can you see the film? Introducing the Bike Bureau, our very own studio and office on two wheels. This is all the equipment we need to do TV and radio lives and interviews, news gathering, all day long. This is the return of London. Oh, there you international access code followed by 44, 20. Well, I hear constant that Anna Holligan is outside the ICC in The Hague. Our correspondent Anna Holligan is at The Hague now. Using this bike to carry out our mobile journalism is revolutionising what we can do, how long we can do it for, and allows us to take you quickly right to the heart of breaking news in a sustainable way. We also hope the Bike Bureau will help the BBC achieve its goal of being the world's greenest broadcaster. Since switching from car to bike two years ago, Anna has already racked up 10,000 kilometres on her bike while working massively cutting her emissions. But we think it has the potential to do even more. This is just phase one. We chose the Netherlands as the perfect place to pilot this project. Editorially, we'll be using the Bike Bureau to focus on solutions and track down positive stories and tech developments that could transform our lives. This is our innovation, a pragmatic and sustainable way to do our mobile journalism. And we hope you'll find it inspiring. And we want you to be part of this journey. If you have stories that you think the Bike Bureau should be covering, then send them our way. Yeah. And one of the things we're going to do, we're, we're going to launch that again at the News Exchange uh, next week with, with basically an open source free list of all the kit that we use to share with other broadcasters. Mm. So if, if anybody just wants to copy it, it it's, it's mm. not ours, mm. but it, it was their idea, so they deserve all the credit for it. But just to follow up that, you, you, you was just, uh, it's only an example. You mentioned yourself, you haven't found the van yet that you sure could take you all the distance yep. all the time. But there, no, there probably is another problem with the van as well. When you find the van, there's going to be a, quite a big uh, difference in price between oh, yeah. the electric van taking you there and the one runs on gasoline. So that is actually also how, how, do, you, how do you balance that, that investment? I mean, it's it, it's just going to be done. We're just going to have okay. to swallow it, but we get no extra income, so we we stop doing something else to okay. pay for that. So it it'll have to be just part of the ongoing budget that we know we are going to have to meet. Uh, and it's got you know it's all sorts of difficulties. If somebody takes the car the, the van home, can they charge it? Have they got a charging point? If they if they live in a flat, where do they charge that? There's all sorts of problems. Mm. We're just going to have to get over them because mm. it, it's the only way forward. And Robert, from your side, what what do you see as the biggest challenges? What, what is well, it's basically, it's the same. I mean, we've been, we've been through a, a huge. Um, oh, there's several things, but but really, to this, we've been through this uh, green fleet program, and our biggest challenge is our technician uh, technician vans. Mm. And what we discovered was that most of them were driving around mm. with a lot of 
equipment that they didn't need. So we could actually reduce the weight by 40%. And, and that actually took us to, to where we needed to be in order to shift from, from diesel into electric for some of them. Mm. Not all of them, but for some of them. Mm. And also think that we, we just have to accept that this is small steps. Mm. And that's really like, I, I love to see your movie because <laughs> I've, been, I've been working with green transitions for the last 30 years mm. and I've been working, you know, developing solutions. But the last three, four years, I've been working 100% on governance structures, yeah. on reporting schemes, and how to measure stuff. And I, I rarely find time for actually doing projects. So it's, it's really nice to see that someone is doing something. Because see something real. <laughs> something real, because it's a lot of reporting these days. It's actually nothing but. But you, you could maybe you could just uh, continue, because a lot of this is also about regulations. So. That, that, must, that must actually impact your work quite a lot in this uh, sector. Yeah, it is. I mean, uh, we have these uh, coming directives that Carsten were, mm -hmm. uh, was referring to, the corporate uh, reporting uh, directive and also this mm -hmm. due diligence directive mm -hmm. coming up in 25, 26. Uh, but we already have the taxonomy mm -hmm. on the EU level. I don't know if you are actually eligible there, but, but uh, Carsten and I have to report into the EU system on how much of our OPEX and CAPEX mm -hmm. are in various um, uh, categories within sustainability, mm -hmm. which is rather time consuming. So I could have an employee working for me to put p pressure on our suppliers or whatever, but instead I need to, you know, spend my money on having a, an accountant uh, working on these things. And I think that's a, that's a bit of a, it's a shame that it's going in that direction, I think. Okay. And if you want to continue? No, I'll just, I'm, I'm really impressed by the bike. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're a biking nation, I yeah. think. Uh, hopefully, if we, ret if we return next year, you'll probably see, the, uh, hopefully see Danish production bikes Good. as well uh, on the streets. But I could say, honestly, because from the point of view of the media sector, some things are easy to do and some are difficult. Mm -hmm. I think if I start out with what is easy is that to say if you can transfer your energy usage into electricity mm -hmm. and convert mm -hmm. your electricity purchase into green electricity, then you're basically there. That is actually the, mm -hmm. the, the prime research type for being climate neutral. And that is also what we are doing. That's our main thing. Our challenge as a as 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 a news uh, mm. a news uh, company, right? And, and and news is part of the DNA of TV2 is travel, mm. yeah. because you cannot have a news coverage if you're not traveling. If you're not there, <laughs> then you're not then you're not then you're not a news agency, right? So I think that how we solve the the travel challenge mm. is going to be the key problem that we need to solve in 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 uh, in the media sector. But I th again, I think technology is our friend. Not mm. only the remote mm. production, but you're getting down to smaller kits mm. and and people who mm. report, shoot, edit themselves. Or if we can get our teams down to a t instead of a team of three of of camera, shoot, edit, producer, reporter. If if we can get some of those skills and mobile journalism is driving mm. this. If we can align some of those skills to make that two people on the plane, it, 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 is that better? Mm. Uh, you know, obvious savings with that as well. But, but there's a sustainability element of that. And I think it's going uh, uh, far more towards that. And, and you know, Morton, in, in, in your company, does a lot of that yep. with the yeah, yeah, yeah. journalism. Yeah. We're, we're all going mm. towards that. Mm. So I do think that will help us. Mm. I think we will open up with any of you have more to add, or then we will open up for questions. Uh, but do some of you have more to add before we open up? Uh, we, we are okay on time. Uh, just mm. one thing I would say is, is part of you know showing what good looks like as yeah. well, and in our not in our news programs as much, but but you know trying to do positive news mm. stories mm. as well or covering mm. the stories as well. So that's a news element. Mm. But in our dramas, mm. if we just have some everyday activity like somebody talking and you know in one of our nightly dramas mm. doing the recycling mm. it's positive imaging mm. uh, and and with the, the recycling in the uk is all over the place each mm. geographical area has a different you don't know what color bin is if you go to my mum's it's a different color from, so it's all over the place but just showing a positive image mm. and if we can we're doing mm. a lot more of that in our in our broadcasting so we're actually mm. positively thinking about it in the areas where we're not mm. sort of telling you how to do it like the news mm. but but you know subliminal messaging mm. i think really important and again tracking those changes mm. are the behavioral changes mm. when we show you some of our programs mm. about you know the, the the environment nature 
Yeah, you do that as well. Uh, a lot of TV2 as well, Carsten. We do a lot, and we actually have. Uh, we were actually uh, very, um, especially on what you call circular economy. You know, call it now, or you call it reuse, right? And we uh, we were actually pretty good at that, especially on our tech equipment. We've been good at that for years, mm. even before it became became a fashion, so to speak. But 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 you're right, and and there's a lot to do on that. And but because of, but we have a tradition to say that when we when we finish using our equipment. Then it, it has a new life or a second life. Uh, with it goes on the ecosystem. Does any of you have uh, something more to uh, add? Well, then I will open up to questions. Does anybody have any questions? We solved the yeah, problem. one down there. We are, we are, and, and 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 of course you're right. But I said, given it, it's a continuum of what is extremely difficult and what is just uh, difficult, the medium difficult, and what is easy. Extremely difficult is how do you work around this fact that that, that you need to travel to be on site to do a proper news coverage. I, I would say that is a really difficult problem for the media sector because we need to be on site, otherwise it's not a news coverage. Uh, what is easy is, as you said, reducing your volume, your usage. You c we, we, c we do a lot. I think last year we reduced our electricity consumption by 12%, and we were on that journey. And then in the middle, what we are trying to do, or that's our ambition, is that the, the, the energy consumption we have on TV2, we actually buy, we, we, we have an, an intention to buy new installments of energy parks in Denmark. So we're actually buying into new uh, new um, uh, plants that will produce green energy. So we will be positively contributing to having the same um, level of production of energy as we are using. So not buying what is already there, but buying new things that will be installed. Uh, we had that ambition to do that uh, last year, but due to the, the energy tri crisis, the, the Ukraine-Russia uh, um, conflict, energy prices were, have been out of sync in Europe for the last uh, one and a half years. It looks as if they will be stable now, so we have an ambition to go back on our plan. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And Marvin, you talked about a little bit about the same thing. You, you were looking at cars, you were looking at other things, but precisely asking, uh, of course, uh, we could do other positive things, but how do you work with that reduction? Yeah, it, it's a mixed economy uh, of, of everything we can do. It's not just the you know the the, the green fuels, but but it, it it's everything we can do. It, it mm. all plays it, it, its part. And and you know in the UK we're lucky enough to to work with the other broadcasters as well. This is not something we're rivals on. We all work together uh, on. And I think that's really important because we get support from each other. And I think we need to look at that. We're all in this together. It's our planet. And and, and whatever we can do, let's stop it reinventing the wheel of of you know. Anything I learn, y you learn, which is why we're, we're going to give a kit list out, but but not just yet. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, we just need to perfect it first. Um, so uh, that that's that's why it's so important that we share these things. So yeah, there are challenges with with you know one particular aspect, but if we if we put a, a lots of uh, you know eggs in lots of baskets, it's easier than just being in one. Just need to take time. Um, we have a few more minutes left. If anyone have more questions. Anybody? I have one question. But you, you touched upon it uh, a couple of times, but there's also seem that there is a tendency in there in what you're saying that you actually need to, because maybe not uh, Carsten and Robert, but in some way TV channels, you are or media houses are competitors as well. But it seems there is a tendency in here that you actually also need to buy in to a lot more openness and actually helping each other in a, in a wholly different way. Coming from where you normally come from, Robert, you you have you have a pretty big, I think. Yeah, I mean, uh, before I came into uh, the telco business, I was working a few years in uh, cosmetics, mm. and that was extremely competitive. Yeah. So I had to find uh, uh, other companies to co for cooperation in other sectors, mm. uh, in the food sector, uh, uh, in um, in all kinds of plastic uh, mm. producing sectors. Uh, but when I came to the telco, I found out 
very, very fast that we are all interested in the yeah. same. So we are actually in a working group trying mm -hmm. to find out how can we do a model that we can all tap into, mm -hmm. that we could all agree to, because I'm not going to be able to use the figures from Carsten before I can compare them to mm. figures from BBC mm. or Netflix or whatever. I need to have a tool that I can, where I can compare mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in various providers in that uh, specific category. So we need to work together. Um, but I would also like to say another thing. Uh, since I've been working in various businesses, I also have a quite, a f quite a experience with demands from customers. Yeah. I don't see any demands from customers in this sector. It's, no. it's really, it's, it's so amazing that uh, I've never been called up by a customer, whether it's mobile phone uh, uh, customer or entertainment customer or whatever, asking for us to be more sustainable no. or more green or have a bigger social responsibility. And that's really weird. Mm. How come it, it, it haven't hit the, uh, the broadcast uh, sector yet? Mm. It's uh, so strange. We get challenged quite a lot. We, we, have, a, a, f a, we have a, a, a news helicopter, mm. which actually we share with one of our other broadcasters. Yeah. But the, th the third big news broadcaster in the UK didn't, didn't want to be part of that. So th uh, there are two helicopters. Mm. Now, over a big story, so say the coronation or, or, or the death of Her Majesty, we, we alternate them so we work together but people have challenged us uh, the, and, our, and our viewers particularly have challenged us why are you still putting helicopters up why aren't you using drones anybody that knows the drone regulations knows that, that there are an awful lot of places you just can't put a drone up you can't put a drone up over huge parts of central London mm. uh, and the helicopter does does stand a, a, a long way back and we absolutely think carefully about when we when we need to use that mm. but is that still an essential part of a news mm. gathering tool mm. for now that is mm. uh, and, and I don't see the drone rules being changed but what where drones have helped if we're doing a big sweeping opening shot in the countryside that's brilliant Mm. Uh, in, in the old days, we might have thought about sending a helicopter mm. to do that. So things are changing, um, but we definitely have had pushback from viewers on that, saying, why are you using that helicopter? Mm. Why can't you use a drone? Mm. The answer is quite a long one. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, it really is interesting, uh, just to actually supplement you on, on that, I was uh, preparing to do like for later today, it's a little bit of a commercial, doing a, like an overview of trends in, in to, towards uh, digital news. And I'm looking at a lot of our trends, I, I was looking a lot about how people were selling their, their brand. And nobody sells their brand as being more sustainable yeah. than anybody else. Yeah. It's simply talking. But could you see, to make it into a question, could you see a world where it actually it will, it become a, a competitive edge that you are more sustainable than your competitor? Just a short run. It's a good question because, as I said, I think pressures will come from two sides. It will definitely come from regulation mm. and from us uh, pressuring each other because we need to do that from, from regulation, right? Uh, it's a good question, and I, and I see it's a good question, Robert, about mm. where are the customers in this. Mm. I think it will come. I th my, my, if I look to my children, if I mm. look to younger people, yeah. their attention to the whole ESG mm. agenda, what you would mm. call it, is just higher than maybe, say, my generation. Yeah. Yeah. So it will probably come, and also, I'm not really sure that people are conscious enough about, as I said again, when they're watching TV or streaming, are they are actually consuming mm. energy? I'm not really sure that they, they that is on that. their mind, right? It's right. more obvious if you drink something that that yeah. something is mm. is is entering your body, right? Yeah, yeah. The, it's yeah. obvious if you're taking yeah. a train or taking a plane, but you don't yeah, think yeah. about their phone that way. Yeah. Okay. But also, if you're measuring the impact, I think we we've been looking into that mm. a little bit yeah. together, actually. The impact is it's not really providing the, the yep. content uh, yep. for the customers. It's the device that they're choosing to, to use mm -hmm. for yeah. watching it. Mm -hmm. It's where you can actually mm -hmm. see the impact and, and measure the impact. For example, we have, uh, I have my good colleague here, who's the head of our music app in UC with 400,000 Danish customers. So we, we are the second largest movie, uh, sorry, music app in Denmark mm -hmm. after Spotify. Mm -hmm. and, we, it, and the content is hosted on our own servers, mm -hmm. provided with energy from the solar parks. Yeah. So we could actually say we have a net zero yeah. uh, prov uh, providing uh, music, uh, App, uh, but it's not interesting. No. So no one would say, okay, then I'll, I will go from Spotify to UC no. because of that. No. So, but I hope we will get there one day. Okay. And 
maybe having more of these sessions talking yeah. about our challenges and what we're trying to achieve, but maybe that I would work. I think the younger generation, definitely mm. my son, uses, instead of using Google as a mm. search engine, it uses a, a cozy, is it? Because they plant, plant a tree? Or, yeah. You yeah. Know, yeah. And he deliberately cho chose Okay. It's that. Yeah. So I think there will be a deliberate choice. And if it's, I mean, maybe not what we do as a public service broadcaster, but, but if you're mm. an independent f mm. filming company or something, mm. somebody might, might choose you for their production because you've got more sustainable c mm. credentials. Mm. Uh, so I can see that, that that happening, you know, or, or, or a key presenter uh, mm. who might be freelance might go to you for the programme because you're more sustainable. Mm. And, and I think that will start okay. to, to go through. Questions? If not, Please give a big hand to these uh, three people. We will be we will be back at that lunch now. It's served out there, uh, and we will be back uh, on both stages at quarter pa past uh, one. On this stage, it's going to be an overview on it says digital trends in the media industry. I think that's a little bit wide news industry. Mm -hmm. So quarter past eight, one, big eight.